this time of year it's actually a little easier to get water because it's well it's all around you the snow can be melted down and made into water fairly readily there's a few tricks and a few rules you have to follow though first and foremost you have to remember that snow is only one part water to nine parts air that means if I want to get a liter of water I'm gonna to have to get at least nine liters of snow to melt it down and get enough to fill up that volume the other thing to remember is you don't throw all that snow into your cook pot at once the main reason because of that is as that water starts to melt at the bottom from the snow the dry snow above it will actually suck up the water and what happens is you get a little dry spot right here beneath the snow between the snow and the bottom of your pot what that causes is a dry boil and your pot ends up looking like this Sometimes it looks like somebody took buckshot to your pot and got all these holes blasting out at the bottom. So you throw in small increments, let them melt down and turn into a slush. You add some more then, and you keep on adding it slowly in increments, and eventually you start to build up. In this cauldron in front of me that's steaming away, we filled that right up with snow over time through increments, snowball after snowball, and now we have about four liters of water in there. Seeing as most humans need about four liters, minimum two, but up to four liters of water to ingest, that's perfect for me. This cook pot here, that holds about seven to eight cups. Well, it did. There's a few other tricks to it. First and foremost, holding your pot above a fire, you get all that focus of heat in one spot. But as you're starting to melt the snow at first, it's better to set it to the side so you don't dry boil rapidly. You wanna just let the snow melt slowly, create a slush. If you have water already on hand, Add some of that there and that actually causes it to hyperhydrate or saturate and is less likely to dry boil by sucking up the water from the bottom <clears throat> into the snow above. But once you have it going, it's really nice to be able to just hang it over the fire. But a lot of the methods that we usually use to hang our pots are hard to do at this time of year because the ground's frozen solid. You can't drive a stick into the ground easily. We could build a tripod and that's very doable, but usually I'm sleeping out with lean-tos this time of year, or I'm gonna be sleeping inside of an enclosed shelter like a teepee or a wigwam, or even those modern uh, lavu tents. With two lodges built, because I usually come with a partner camping out in the woods, two uh, lean-tos across from each other and a fire in between, I can easily put a ridge pole across, and that I can suspend my pot from. But also I can use that ridge pole to support my clothing away from the fire and let them dry off, especially these big over shirts, my moccasins or mucklucks, and of course my socks. So I can hang those up over near my lodge or over near my lean-to on that ridge pole and have my cook pot right in the middle. But how do we suspend a pot from the ridge pole? In this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. So, one of the easiest ways to suspend from a ridge pole is to use a withy. And this is a probably about a five-year-old, maybe a four-year-old piece of red osier dogwood. It doesn't really matter about the age, so much of the size. I want this just with the same size as my thumb. I want this to be fairly strong and stout. Most times of the year when I'm suspending a pot, I'm gonna look for a branch that's coming off the pole like that. And I'll use that as my hook rather than having to carve a hook. This time of year though, dogwood, willow, alder, young maples, things like that, they're a little bit more brittle. And that branch can just snap right off and there goes my pot full of snow right into my fire and I got two problems, no water and now no fire. So what I prefer to do is carve the end. And I did this just with one knife cut. So all I'm gonna do is continue the cuts to taper this off, just like that. And then I'm gonna measure by one thumb up from the end so that I, don't, so that I have just enough amount of wood there that I'm not gonna have it break off by getting too thin and brittle. I'm gonna make a quick X And from that X, I'm now going to carve in, and I'm going to carve out a pot hook. And that pot hook is going to be about halfway through the thickness of the stick. And that way I have a nice little secure section, a little ledge to hold my pot's bale off. Now that we got the pot hook carved, let's get rid of some of this mess up here. I don't want to get rid of it all. But I want to clean it up a bit. These extra little branches down here are just going to gouge my eye when I go to check my pot. So I'm just going to trim those off. And of course, I don't want to trim too high up until I know exactly how long this has to be to get down to where my bale is going to hang over the fire properly. So I'm just going to trim it off a little bit. 
That should be good for now. I got all these big branches up here that I'm going to be using to lash this to the ridge pole. The real secret here is we're dealing with cold weather. In cold weather, sticks become a little bit more brittle. So what I want to do before I do any binding is warm it over the fire. This is why we light our fire before we try to cook our uh, meals or melt our snow. We can use the heat of the fire. It only takes a few seconds to warm up the limbs enough. There's still enough moisture underneath the bark to kind of steam bend it and make it a little bit more flexible. I'm not trying to cook the branches because that weakens them. I'm not trying to burn the branches because, well, then they're not there anymore. I'm just trying to thaw them enough to make them a little bit more flexible. That's exactly what I'm looking for right there. Perfect. So now we're going to bind it on. So we've got a nice trembling aspen ridge pole here. Not the strongest ridge pole in the world, I'll tell you that right now. I would prefer to use something like cedar or pine or spruce, spruce being best for all that. Uh, but down here in the hardwoods, things like maple, ash, uh, alder, if you can find it thick enough. But you know what, poplar is good enough. It'll do the job, especially at the thickness of that. What I want to do is figure out the exact height that I need this at. Now what we usually do is we have an empty pot. This one's three quarters full of boiling water right now. We usually have an empty pot and we hang it right off the bale right off the hook and measure it from there. But here I can actually just look and approximate right about there. So this fork here is going to be my actual tying off point. I'm going to be using this branch on one side of the ridge pole and this branch on the other side of the ridge pole. I'm going to bring them up, drape them around, start to bind them together at the right height. And the lashing technique that we're going to do is we're going to wrap the, uh, the branches around at least twice to make sure it's got a good grip. And as we go, we're going to bind them together either with a square knot, a lark's head, or whatever other method we have to bind them. What I usually do is a clove hitch on each one, or just simply a square lashing or square knot. Now we actually have two pots over our fire. And this starts to give you an idea of what we can do with a ridge pole setup. With a ridge pole between two lean-tos, or strapped between two trees with a long log fire in between, I can hang multiple pots. One pot could be melting snow, the other could be boiling water for tea and coffee, the next one over could be boiling rice, the next one could be boiling the pasta, the next one could be making the pasta sauce, I could be making bread in my Dutch oven at the end of it or my camp oven at the end of the ridge line. You can see when you set this up, whether it's a base camp setting like it is here at Camp Mud or out in a snowshoe and toboggan trek up in northern Ontario or northern Quebec, we can have a lot of stuff set up for a large group of people. This is one of the best ways to be able to support a crew out in the field in winter time. So again, all it takes is one withy, or in this case several withies if you want to make several of them, carved at the end to make a hook, warmed on the other side and wrapped around multiple times, and simply lash, whether you use a half hitch, clove hitch, square lashing, whatever it may be, whatever holds best. And then you simply hang your pots over the fire and let it get going to work.